John from Superbase here, and in this video, we're gonna learn all about function hooks. Now this kind of combines concepts that we covered in the last two videos, where we can subscribe to particular events that happen in the database, like insert, update, or delete, but rather than calling a Postgres function, we can make a HTTP request to an API anywhere on the internet. So this allows us to use third-party APIs, but we can automate the calls to those APIs based on data changing in our database. So in this video, we're gonna look at creating a customer in Stripe anytime a new user logs into our application. So let's get into it. So here I have my Next.js application where we have implemented auth, so the user can log out, they can log back in, um, they can click this button as many times as they would like, and then the amount of times that they've clicked that button is saved alongside our user in our Superbase database. Now this application is so cool that we want to implement Stripe so we can start charging people to actually use it. And so the first step in that process is when a new user registers with our application, when we create a new user in our auth.users table, we want to go and create a Stripe customer as well. And so in order to be able to run this code and actually create a customer in Stripe, we're going to need a Node.js instance. And so we're gonna need something that is running server-side rather than client-side. Now Next.js makes that super simple um, where we can just create an API folder in our pages directory and then any files that we create in here will be turned into serverless functions. So we can say create stripe customer.js, and then we create a handler function. And so this is the function that will actually be uh, executed when the user navigates to this API route. And we can export that as the default. And then in here, we basically just want to, uh, well, I guess we could just copy and paste the code from Stripe's awesome documentation. And so it looks like we need the Stripe library. And so we can install that here. And now we can move that statement up and uh, turn it into an import. So we're going to import the init Stripe function from the Stripe package. We can then replace this require Stripe with a call to init Stripe. So this is going to be our function that gives us back our Stripe client. And we're passing that our Stripe secret key, which we probably don't want to have in our code. So let's cut that and move it into our .env.local file. And we'll just call that Stripe secret. And remember, we don't want to prepend this with next underscore public underscore because we only want this to be available server side. So we only want it to be available in get server side props, get static props, and in our API routes folder. So we can save this file now, um, and then we can run our server again. And now instead of having that value um, specified directly in a string, we can access it by saying process.env.stripe underscore secret. And then this statement is going to create us a new uh, customer in Stripe, um, but we don't actually want to give it a description. In our case, we want to give it an email. And so we can just make this email for now, hello at me.com. And then in order to send a response back from our handler function, uh, we need to bring in request and response. And then we can just say res.send. And we want to send back a JSON object with the key message set to Stripe customer created. And then we can also put in our uh, Stripe, oh sorry, customer, customer.id. And so that's this customer here. Uh, this will be our newly created customer in Stripe. And we just want to send back their ID. And so we can now actually navigate to this URL. Um, so it will be slash API slash create Stripe customer. And that's going to run this function. So let's have a look at that. If we have our localhost over port 3000 and we go to slash API slash create Stripe customer, you'll see that we get back that message Stripe customer created and this is our customer ID. And if we go over to our uh, Stripe dashboard and then have a look at our customers, we have a new customer that's been created for us in Stripe with the email hello at me.com. And so when we create this new customer in Stripe, we probably want to get back their customer ID so that we can store it in our Superbase database. And so let's create a column for that in our profile table. So this is going to be Stripe customer. Uh, the type for this one is going to be text. And let's click save to create that column. And now back over in our API route, rather than passing this um, a static email, 
we probably want this to be dynamic and based off the user who's currently logged in in our application. And so when we send a request to this API route, we could include uh, the user's email that we want to create a Stripe customer for. And so we can access this here by saying request.body.record.email. And the reason this is .record.email um, is this is going to be the structure that our Superbase hook is going to uh, send that information in. And so now that we have a new customer in Stripe for our user from our application, we probably want to write their Stripe ID uh, to their profile table. And so we can call Superbase here and say superbase.from the profiles table. Oh, sorry, that needs to be a string. Uh, from our profiles table, we want to update the column for stripe underscore customer with the value from our customer dot ID. And then we always want to add a dot equals anytime we are running an update or a delete, because otherwise it will go and update everything to that value or delete everything from the table. Um, and so we want to do this where our ID column is equal to request.body.record.id. And so again, this record is going to automatically be passed in in the requests body. And so now when we save this, um, what this serverless function is doing is we're creating a Stripe client. We're then using that Stripe client to create a Stripe customer based on uh, the user that has been provided to this API route. We're then using Superbase to update the profile uh, for our currently logged in user. And we're just adding our new Stripe customer uh, to the Stripe customer column of that table. And because we're using Superbase here, we need to bring in our Superbase client. And because this is an asynchronous call, uh, we just need to add a wait before it. And so now our API route does everything that it needs to do to go and create that customer and write it to our Superbase database. But if we try to run this, we're going to get an error that we're not actually providing a record.email or a record.id. But really, we probably don't want to manually call this API route. We probably want Superbase to be responsible for calling this API route anytime a new profile is created. So basically, anytime a new user registers an account with our application, uh, Superbase will automatically create an associated profile. And then we want to listen to any insert on that profiles table and automatically go and create a Stripe customer. And so in Superbase, we can use some very handy functionality that does this exact thing for us called function hooks. So if we head over to database and then function hooks, we can enable hooks for our project and we can then create a function hook. And so the name of this one will be create Stripe customer. And similarly to Postgres triggers, uh, we can select a table that we would like to listen to. So in this case, we want to listen to our profiles table um, and we can subscribe to particular events. And so anytime a new profile is inserted into our profiles table, um, we want to go and make a HTTP request to our API route that's going to create a Stripe customer for us. And so you might think, okay, cool. I'm just gonna come and copy this URL and put it in here and we need to change this get to a post. But our Superbase instance is hosted off in a cloud somewhere. We don't know where that's running. And so uh, it doesn't actually know about our local host. This is something that's running on our machine. This is our dev server for Next.js. It doesn't know how to route this request from a server hosted somewhere off in the cloud through to our laptop. And so if we want to be able to send a request from the internet uh, to our API route, we will need to host it on the internet. Um, and so in my case, I'm going to host it on Vercel. Now I've already set up an integration for my clicky click project, and this will automatically deploy anytime I push new changes to GitHub. But I do need to tell it about my new environment variable for my Stripe secret. So if you come to settings and then environment variables, and then I'm going to add one here for Stripe secret. And I'm going to grab that value from my .env file. And I can now come back to my application, quit my running server, and then add my changes, create a new commit, and then git push origin main. And so once the new version of my application has successfully been deployed, I can grab the URL for my clicky click hosted application, and then come back to Superbase, replace this part of my local host with that Vercel URL, and then click confirm. We can now come to the hosted version of our application and we'll refresh just to make sure that we have the latest version. 
And actually, before we register, uh, we'll need to go and delete our existing user from Superbase. So we'll first need to delete the profile for our user. And now we'll go over to authentication and then users and delete our Superbase user. And now in our application, we can click register and you'll see we've been signed in as john at example.com. If I now go back over here and refresh, we'll see that our user has successfully been created in Superbase. So then let's go make sure the profile has been created. And so that's been created successfully, but you'll see here, we now have a Stripe customer. And this ID now maps to a new customer that's been created in our Stripe dashboard. Now you might notice that the email has not been set correctly for this user. And that's because back over in our API route where we're creating um, our Stripe customer, we've passed across an email and we've said this will come from request.body.record.email. But remember this record refers to the row from the profile table. And so if we go and have a look at the columns in that table, there is no column for email. And so we could either add an email column to this table so that we can keep a track of that and send it across when we create a Stripe customer. Or since we only really need a way to work out uh, which Stripe customer this maps to in our system, it's probably better for us to pass across the ID. And so in our API route, um, since we already have an ID for our customer in Stripe, um, we're going to set the name field to be the ID from Superbase. So here we just need to change the key email to name, and then we'll set it to our request.body.record.id. And now we need to deploy these changes to Vercel. So we're going to add them. We're going to commit and say fix email and we can push to origin main. And this will start a deploy with Vercel. And so while that's happening, we can go and delete our test records. So again, we need to delete our profile first and then delete our authentication user. We can also go and delete our test customers in Stripe. And now hopefully our deployment in Vercel is ready and we can come back to our clicky click application and log out. And now when we click register, we've been automatically signed in. We can click the button a couple of times just for good measure. And now when we come over to our Superbase database and refresh our users, we see our new user. And when we go to our profile, we see that ID and our new Stripe customer ID. And now in the Stripe dashboard, if we refresh our customers, we'll see our new customer has been created. Only now they have this ID that we can use to map our Stripe customer back to our Superbase user. And so just to quickly recap, we created an API route in Next.js that's responsible for creating a Stripe customer for us and then writing that value back to our Superbase database. We then pushed our application to Vercel so that we had a live URL on the internet for our API route. And then we set up a function hook in Superbase, which listens to insert events on our profiles table and then calls our API route to create that Stripe customer. And that's how easy it is to use function hooks to basically set up an integration between our Superbase database and any API that exists in the world. We can subscribe to those database events like insert, update, or delete. And when those events occur, we can make a request to any URL on the internet. Now that is very cool. And speaking of very cool, make sure you check out our clicky-click.vercel.app. Uh, you'll need to log in and then click this button as many times as you can click it, and we'll see how high we can get that number. If you liked this video, make sure you hit that like button below. If you really didn't like it, hit that dislike button twice so we definitely get the message. Leave a comment if there's any other videos you'd like to see in this kind of format. I also recommend you check out our YouTube channel, that's slash C slash Superbase for more awesome videos just like this one. Head over to our Twitter and give us a follow. We always appreciate that. And come and join our Discord. We would love to hear from you. If you would like to go a little bit deeper on the concepts that have been covered in this series, I recommend you check out my Egghead course, build a SaaS product with Next.js, Superbase, and Stripe. Uh, it goes much more in depth than what we've covered here uh, and basically goes from an empty project all the way through to a fully live in production SaaS product that can make you real money. And it's entirely free. So go and check that one out. Let us know what you thought. Thanks.